In today's video, we're going to take a look at the this keyword in JavaScript. This is a very sort of confusing concept due to the fact that in many other languages, many other object oriented languages, um, the this keyword is very straightforward. It just refers to the instance of the class you're currently in. But in JavaScript, this can be many, many things. So first things first, let's figure out what the this keyword is if we use it outside of any function or any class. Right? So if I, for example, say, I don't know, let's say just console.log this. I'm gonna take a look at the console, don't worry. We're just gonna add a breakpoint here. And basically what we're testing is what this means if we just use it inside the uh, inside the JavaScript file. By the way, this is in Node.js what I'm doing. So if I try to run this, we're gonna hit the breakpoint. And if I go to watch this, I already have here the this keyword. And this, well, is just as you can see an empty object. Well, why might that be an empty object? In Node.js, uh, everything is separated by modules and uh, our own program here is a module. And when you use this outside of any function in Node.js, it's just a reference to the local uh, module. All right, so this refers to the current local module in Node.js. But if we were to go over to a browser, right? So if we open any browser tab and just go to DevTools here and type in this, outside of any function, you'll notice that this is has the value of the current window. And the window object is something specific to the browser implementation of JavaScript, and it holds information about, well, the current window you're in. In fact, this is the global namespace object for the JavaScript implementation for, uh, well, Chrome. Okay. Now that we know all that, what happens if we instead try to call a function and look at the this inside a function? Right, so if I stop this and we, for example, go ahead and create a function called test and we put in this uh, code inside it, right? And then just call this. If I have a breakpoint here and try to run it, you'll notice that this now became a different uh, value, right? So this is now glo the global namespace object for Node.js, right? Whereas with the browser, we had the window, which was the global namespace object. For Node.js, it's this thing, which has a lot of, well, most of the useful classes and we don't have the actual window in here. That's, that's the main difference because Node.js doesn't have a window. But as you might notice, the global namespace object in Node.js will have information about the console object, which we're using here. It might have the, let's say the timeout, where is it? The set timeout, set interval functions that you might be familiar with. It has a string class and so on and so forth. So here are basically all the common stuff that you might be using from application to application. Now let's see what happens if we do the same thing in a browser. So if I copy this and try to do the same thing in a browser, I'm just gonna copy this code. If I hit enter, well, you'll notice that I get printed on the screen. This is the return value, by the way. This is the this is what we printed using the console log. This, we printed again the window object. So it's exactly the same thing. There's no difference when you do this uh, in the browser, but when you do it with Node.js, there is a difference. Now this behavior changes actually, depending on whether you're using strict mode or not. So if I change this uh, module to use actually strict mode by setting it here, you will notice that when I run this, that this keyword now in here is actually undefined. So due to the fact that that global uh, namespace object was the default for any function that didn't have a, this to be bound to, well, under the strict mode, you actually get undefined instead, right? So it's clear cut and you don't have to really worry much about modifying something that you don't have. It's just undefined. And well, if you're modifying it, it's just going to error out and you're going to actually notice it much, much faster. So I, I really suggest you use strict mode a lot more. Uh, 
Now this does not apply to the to the this outside of any function, right? So at the level, at the module level, if you do this, if you run it, this is still gonna be an object even though we're using the strict mode. Okay, so be careful with that. Okay, so we have a global function that uses the this keyword, but because it is global, the this keyword is something very special. What if we instead have an object that has this function? We call that through the object. What do I mean by that? Well, what if we create, for example, an object like this, and inside its uh, properties, we have a property called, let's say, test, and it has the value of a function, like so. And let's say just console log this, it doesn't really matter. And if I breakpoint here, I also actually use the function, so I'm gonna go ahead and call this test function, not this global one, all right? Because I prefixed it with uh, O dot. If I try to run it, you'll notice that the this is no longer the global namespace object, but is actually the object that this function resides in, right? So this is an object that has the property test, which is a function. This is this uh, object, this whole object. So if I try to, for example, add, let's say, I don't know, let's say X and have it be 15, if we run this, we should see X in here. And that is correct. So when you say this inside a function that is uh, a value for a property of an object, then it's that object that you usually call it. Now, this is not always the case, but if you call it like this, if you call the test function like this, you're gonna get uh, the this keyword to be the object itself, okay? And then what we can do here is, for example, uh, modify the object. So, so you can say this.x plus plus, for example. And then if I try to run it, you'll notice that x is actually 16, right? So this is how you would use, for example, member functions in quotes uh, with the member fields inside an object. Now, this is the standard way you might call a function inside an object. But what if, for example, we have another object, let's say k, and that would be having another uh, property that's called test, and that would just be a reference to our function test here. So I can say k has the property test and its value, well, it's just o.test, right? What happens if I call this then? So I go k here, and if I try to run it, you'll notice that the this object doesn't have an x inside it. Why? Why might that be? Why would you think that that might be? Because the way we called that function is through k and not through o. And because of that, the this inside this function is the one that we called it with, which is k. And if we try to continue this, we're gonna get an error because x doesn't exist. If I add, for example, here another x, let's say 10, for example, and run it again, you'll notice that our x is actually 10. So it is in fact this uh, k object and not this o object this time. All right, so the, this keyword is uh, can, can be changed easily due to the way you're calling these uh, functions. Okay, so you're gonna have to be careful when using the this keyword inside your functions that you're not gonna do something like this. So whenever you're using this inside a function, just make sure you're calling it through this object if you want to access this property, for example. Otherwise, we're gonna end up using another object's properties. Right, if I, if I rebind this function to the K object. Now, if you want to prevent this from happening, what you have to do is whenever you're assigning the function itself, either here or here, you should just suffix this with a bind call. So you just go dot bind, and what bind does is basically set set the this uh, 
keyword's value in stone, right? So it can never be changed. Whatever the uh, calling context might be. So if it's K or O, it doesn't matter because we have set it here. And if we set this guy to be O, then whenever we call the test function, be it like this or be it with O instead of K, it's not gonna matter because this from here has already been bound to O. So if I try to run this, you'll notice that this has X be 15 which is our O, even though we did call it with K, okay? And the same thing applies if we do it with O. It doesn't, it doesn't change anything here, right? It's still 15. Now I did make a video on both bind and apply that you can check up top. It's a bit more in detail. It should help you understand what this bind function does. Uh, but this is a really quick fix if you have this issue where the this keyword might change. Now, one last thing that I want to talk about is classes. We didn't talk about classes and we've been talking about the this keyword for like uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So let's create here a simple class called let's say cat and let's give it a constructor that has uh, the age, right? I'm gonna actually assign the age to our cat and let's have a function here. Let's say meow, why not? And just kind of I'm going to console log this and again, I'm just going to breakpoint it. And outside of the classes definition, I'm just going to create an, an instance of this cat. So just new cat. I'm going to give it the age of, I don't know, let's say four, not too young, not too old. And what I'm going to do is just call that meow function. Okay. So I hope that's straightforward. I just have the constructor to have this age property inside the cat and that I set here and then this is the function that we're testing. So this is a function inside a, a class that we're calling. And we're trying to see if the this keyword does or doesn't change inside here. So if I try to run it here, you'll notice that our this in here, it's actually the cat itself. So it's the instance of the cat that we have that we have created here using the new keyword and has the, the age of four. Nice, that's that's uh, perfect. Now, so far you'll notice that the this keyword works the same as with the objects, right? So we set we said cat dot meow, and inside the inside the function here, the this keyword was whatever the calling context was, which is cat, which is the instance that of the cat that we created down here. Fair enough. But what happens if we change the calling context. So if we call this same function, but without prefixing it with uh, this cat, instead we prefix it with some other object. So if we create here an, uh, an object K again, and suppose we give it the, the name test this time, and we say test should be cat.meow. So you notice the function itself, I'm not calling it in any way. If I try to run this, if I say k.test, we should still hit this breakpoint Okay, but the this keyword has changed. You notice that the this keyword is not a cat instance. It's actually just a simple old object that does not have the age property. In fact, it's this object again, All right? So now with, with classes, you're probably not gonna run into this, but if you're passing um, sort of event handlers, to a framework and those handlers are actually uh, member methods of a class, you have to be careful with that because the this keyword might change. In certain situation, that is the case with jQuery if you're still using that, so be careful. And finally, we're done with the this keyword. I think this covers 99.9% .9 of the use cases for this keyword and I hope that you now understand what is the this keyword and when it has certain values and when it doesn't. So it's more predictable now. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care.